Using a thermal drone to inspect a solar farm can be a really efficient and cheaper method of inspection, but there are a good amount of strict guidelines that must be followed in order to achieve inspection success. My name is John and today I'm going to be talking about the 7 most common mistakes beginners and even some veterans are making when flying their drone solar inspection. And make sure you stick around to the end of the video where I'm going to be sharing with you a little known bonus mistake that I personally made after inspecting many solar farms. So with that, let's get into the video. When inspecting solar panels, the thermal sensor needs to be perpendicular to the tilt of the panels. And what that means is the camera's pitch angle is the same as a row of panels. So you can see this is a good example of what the camera angle should look like. And then there's a few here that you definitely don't want to replicate. However, you can deviate up to 20 degrees if you are experiencing bad glare. Since the panels are reflective, that can be a common issue. If it's a dual tilt system, which happens on some rooftops and carports, you're going to want to fly nadir, which means the camera is going to be facing straight down at a 90 degree angle. And if it's a PV system that has tilt trackers that are going to change position when you're doing the inspection, you just need to be aware of that when it's going to happen and then you can just change the camera angle accordingly. This mistake is one I commonly see people skipping over. However, it is so important to be verifying your images when you're in the field. They could be blurry if the wind was pushing the drone around, sections of the solar farm can be missed, or files can get corrupted. Mistakes like this happen, and if you haven't encountered any of these issues yet, trust me, you will. You also would not want to start analyzing the data at the office just to realize you need to go back and fly the site again. So just bring your laptop, hook up your phone with the hotspot, and verify your data. I also offload the images from the SD card to my computer when changing batteries, so it's just another good practice to do. This is a solar irradiance meter, and it's a must have for your toolkit. Basically, it lets us know how strong the sun energy is, so we can be certain that we're getting the best data from our infrared camera. Thermal drone inspections need to be done with a minimum level of irradiance of 600 watts per square meter. So you're gonna be using this sensor right here to figure that out. If it's cloudy, the irradiance will be low and the inspection can't really be done because the low, low so, uh, solar radiation makes it a lot harder to distinguish anomalies on the panels. And if it's a clear sunny day, the irradiance would be much higher than 600 watts, which is great, but it's also important to make sure you check the irradiance throughout the inspection as well, because weather conditions can change or you know clouds can roll in or if the sun begins to set. I personally set a timer on my phone for around every 20 minutes and take a photo of the readout on the screen. It's super easy because it actually on the phone will tell me exactly when the photo was taken so when I get back to the office I can you know log all that stuff down and not, and not have to do that all out in the field. Even if you can't be physically near the panels like on a carport for example you can still measure the irradiance as long as you're near them and the sensor of the irradiance meter is at the same angle of the panels. I use the general tools DBTU 1300 which is a relatively inexpensive solar irradiance meter and it's really easy to use so I'll put a link in the video description so you can go pick one up for yourself. So like I mentioned, doing the inspection is best on clear days, but you can also do it with a maximum cloud cover of 2 eighths octas. Basically, octa is a meteorological term, meaning that zero octa is a completely clear sky and eight is a full overcast. You can download several weather apps that tell you the cloud coverage. I personally use one called Weather Radar. You can view what the clouds would look like up to a few days in advance, and it's been working really well for me. Just a note, it's definitely better to wait for a guaranteed clear day than, than to try and quickly rush and do the inspection when there's overcast expected in a few hours. You know, this is where mistakes happen and it's just unnecessary pressure. The first thing I do when arriving to any site, whether it is a secluded solar farm surrounded by farmland or a busy warehouse with a rooftop system, is I perform an on-foot site walk around. This is something that most pilots don't do, but it should not be overlooked. Not only are you getting some much needed exercise for the day, 
but you will get a much better understanding of the overall layout of the PV system. You also want to define secondary landing locations in case of an in-flight emergency. And during your stroll, you can you know, look for trees, uh, bird nests, some power lines. And with doing that, you can then establish the minimum obstacle clearance altitude or the MOCA. So you can then set your return to home accordingly. Okay, I know I'm putting a lot of weather variables in this video, but that's just because this stuff is so important for a successful inspection. You cannot, and I mean not, fly a drone solar inspection when the wind is over 15 miles per hour. This is because it will create a cooling effect across the panels and make it a lot harder to distinguish anomalies. Strong winds can also move the drone around, making the images blurry or depleting the batteries faster. I strongly recommend this device called an anemometer. Basically, it measures the wind speed in real time, so you know if it's too windy to perform the inspection. Also, the wind speed that you're gonna be measuring at ground level is often not as strong as higher up where the drone will be flying, so it's just something to keep in mind. So the altitude that you're gonna be flying at depends on a lot of factors, like the millimeter length camera you have, how in depth of an inspection you're gonna be doing, and what kind of PV system it is. I can't give exact altitudes since it really varies in every single circumstance, but the biggest mistake I see is people calculate their altitude at AGL or above ground level. This is incorrect as the altitudes are based from the surface of the panels, not the ground. So there's special considerations when inspecting elevated solar systems like rooftops and carports. If we typically fly at say 100 feet for a ground mounted system, and then we go to inspect a rooftop, we're not gonna be flying at 100 feet anymore. We need to factor in the height of the roof too. So if the panels are located at the top of the roof, which has a height of 50 feet, we will need to then add them together and then our inspection is gonna be flown at 150 feet. The altitude also goes hand in hand with something called the GSD or ground sample distance. The GSD represents the level of detail of the inspection. So this relates to the number of pixels that exist within a distance measured on the ground. A smaller GSD equates to more detailed images which achieve higher quality data. So if the drone is flying closer to the panels, the anomalies will be easier to locate and diagnose. So knowing what GSD is required for the flight is another important step you must understand to avoid any data quality mistakes. And now the bonus mistake that I've personally made is setting the takeoff location too close to metal objects around the solar farm. There's panel mounts, fencing, underground wires, inverter boxes. All of these can cause magnetic interference with the drone. So I try and find the most open areas during my site walk around that would be best for takeoff and landing as well as setting up all my gear. Well, that was the seven mistakes that you need to avoid when doing your thermal drone inspection of a solar system. If you personally made any of these or even some similar ones, definitely let me know your experience in the comments. And if you want to watch a complete video guide on how to inspect a solar farm using a drone step by step, click on this video here. But anyways, thanks for watching and fly safe.